This video is going to be on the coagulation cascade. The coagulation cascade consists of lots of coagulation factors which makes up secondary hemostasis. So the end result of this coagulation cascade is to convert fibrinogen, which is a soluble molecule, into fibrin, which is an insoluble molecule. Most of these coagulation factors are produced by the liver. The coagulation cascade can be broken into three different pathways, and I'll represent them here as a Y. The first pathway is the intrinsic pathway, and it consists of four coagulation factors, factors 12, 11, 9, and 8. This pathway is activated by lots of different things, including collagen, so that subendothelial collagen, it can also be activated by platelet granule contents, also bacterial components such as LPS or endotoxin, and finally clay activates this pathway as well. And the clay becomes important when I talk about the testing of the intrinsic pathway, specifically ACT. The extrinsic pathway consists of two factors, factors 3 and 7. Factor 3 is more commonly known as tissue factor, or TF. This pathway is activated when the subendothelial collagen releases tissue factor after the endothelial cells have been injured or damaged. The third pathway is the common pathway. It consists of factors 10, 5, 2, and 1. Factor 2 is more commonly known as thrombin, and factor 1 is more commonly known as fibrinogen. Thrombin is the last molecule within the coagulation cascade that actually converts fibrinogen to fibrin. So thrombin cleaves fibrinogen, which is that soluble molecule, into fibrin, which is insoluble and contributes to clot formation. So at this point, you're probably thinking, how the heck am I going to remember these pathways? Well, fortunately, somebody much smarter than myself came up with the Walmart special. So Walmart is selling an item, and it's listed as $12. But Walmart finds that the item isn't selling when it's listed for $12, so it's going to reduce the price to $11.98 because Walmart is stingy and it doesn't want to lose that much money. But even at this reduced price, the item still isn't being sold. So the item gets marked down to $10, but it's still not getting sold. So Walmart cuts the price in half to $5, still not selling. So it gets cut in half again, kind of, to $2, and then finally slashed in half again to $1, and it finally sells. So now I'm going to talk about the tests that we use to assess these pathways. First, I'll talk about the PT and the ACT tests. Both of these tests evaluate the intrinsic and common pathways. So both of these tests evaluate how long it takes a clot to form after activation of the intrinsic pathway. So it evaluates all the way from 12, 11, 9, 8, 10, 5, 2 to 1. The PTT is measured off of citrated plasma. So that's plasma that's drawn up in anticoagulant citrate that's within a blue top tube. ACT is measured as whole blood that's measured up into a special tube that contains clay. So remember that clay that activates the intrinsic pathway. That's the clay that's within the ACT tube. Now, PTT stands for partial thromboplastin time, and ACT stands for activated clotting time. The test that we use to evaluate the extrinsic and common pathway is the PT, or prothrombin time. This pathway evaluates how long it takes a clot to form with activation of the extrinsic pathway. So it evaluates the time it takes to go from 7, 10, 5, 2 to 1. 
Now, tissue factor is actually added to the sample, so it doesn't evaluate tissue factor or factor 3. PT is also measured off of citrated plasma, so that's plasma that's acquired through a blue top tube that contains the anticoagulant citrate. There's one more test that's called the thrombin time, or TT. It measures the amount of fibrinogen and the function of fibrinogen. So it measures how long it takes to form a clot with the addition of lots of thrombin to the sample. So TT stands for thrombin time. It doesn't actually measure thrombin. You're adding thrombin to the sample. The only thing that it measures is the quantity and quality of fibrinogen. Now, there are four of these factors that require vitamin K to be produced by the liver. These factors are vitamin K dependent, and they are 2, 7, 9, and 10. So if there are times of vitamin K antagonism, then you will have marked decreases in these factors. This becomes important when animals ingest rodenticides that contain vitamin K antagonists. Factor 7 has the shortest half-life of all of the factors. It's only in circulation for a few hours. So I'm going to stop there, and the next video will pick up with how we actually use these tests to figure out what's wrong with the patient, what's actually causing the bleeding.